you saw the very best players the entire country has to offer, and you saw it throughout the course of the weekend. He's growing, he's improving at such a rapid rate. He, he's going to be a very good player. This guy's a cross between Sean Marion and Lamar Odom. He's a six foot eight lefty, a high level athlete, but also got a little bit of point forward skills in him as he can handle and pass the ball extremely well. At this point, they are simply the standard by which everyone else is judged in prep school basketball. He's considering the likes of Michigan, North Carolina, Kentucky, Kansas. Welcome to the latest episode of the Upside Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Finkelstein, and on this week's episode, we are going to talk about coaches versus cancer. And I know the last 12 months have been an incredibly uh, difficult time. We faced adversity in a lot of different ways. Of course, the pandemic, uh, not the least of which. But the implications of the pandemic have been felt in a variety of different tangential ways, and one of which has been the fundraising impacts that go into the, the fight against cancer. And of course, in the basketball world, a lot of that has to do with the efforts of coaches versus cancer. So on this week's episode, I have Brian Castellanova, who's the Senior Community Development Manager for the American Cancer Society and oversees the Coaches versus Cancer program for the New England region, someone I've worked directly with for the last several years. We're also very lucky to have uh, Coach Phil Martelli, the assistant coach for Michigan, and of course, the longtime head coach at St. Joe's, who is the past chair of the National Coaches versus Cancer Council for the American Cancer Society. So gentlemen, thank you both uh, so much for, for joining us here today. Thank you, appreciate thank it. Thank you for having us. So. Coach, I, I should preface this by saying I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and see if I can uh, get you for round two to talk basketball some other time, but but this time I, I do want to make this uh, strictly a, a, a about the the efforts of the American Cancer Society. Brian, let me start here. What what has fundraising looked like this year, or or in the last you know fiscal year, twelve months or so? Uh, versus pre previous years, or, or is are we seeing a, a lot less people being able to contribute than we would in a typical year? Yeah, there is a big decline with the school shutdowns and the hesitation for high schools and colleges to to hold sporting events. Um, it's greatly affected the participation in the program. Um, and then the schools that are um, participating, uh, having no fans in the in the seats is a uh, is a big detriment to to the fundraising as um, gate proceeds tends to be a big, big portion of uh, funds raised at the coaches versus cancer events. So, you know, this year to last year, year over year, looking at just basketball and winter fundraising, you know, we're down 70 percent uh, participation. 70%. Participation wise, not, you know, Suits and Sneakers Week hasn't happened yet. Uh, right. And there might still be some schools that are participating. But as far as schools that have signed up and committed to hosting games, it's down significant uh, from this time last year. Well, let's, uh, I'm going to start by pointing the finger first at myself. I mean, this is so as Brian and I have worked together for the last few years, because we've coordinated a, a drive, if you will, of uh, prep schools and high schools, mostly in the New England area, but we've started to extend beyond that. Uh, and, and Coach, you, you might appreciate this. This is a, the story of how this came to be. We were running one of our prep school events. This is probably five, six years ago, and we run it at, at uh, Babson College and in uh, Massachusetts. And I got a call from a local radio guy who said, um, I'd love to have you on this morning. I was on my way to the gym, talk about the event. I said, great, you know, take the publicity. And at the end of it, he said, is there a cause or anything? And, and I said, well, it's, it's for profit. But I said to, I said to him afterwards, I said, you know what, you're a hundred percent right. And from that point on, we used that event as a, a starting point for this drive. And, and we've been able to to have, I mean, Brian, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think there were, I mean, it's it's been in the tens of thousands we've been able to raise, but prep schools just this year, I mean, there's just, there's no avenue for them to to really figure out how to do this. So, and we're gonna, so, and I'm gonna come back to this later, but Brian, what's the best way for people who, who wanna donate right now? And I'm gonna continue to come back to this, but for people who wanna donate, but don't have the, the typical avenues to do so that they would in a normal year, how can they go about doing that this year? Uh, we, I would ask, you know, for coaches and for teams that still wanna participate or even make a donation, go to suitsandsneakers.org. 
uh, www.coatsuitsandsneakers.org, and you can sign up and you can still hold, even without having a season or without having games or your schedule being in shambles, you can still create a page for your school, for your team, for an individual, and you can share that on social media uh, and collect donations. You can also uh, make a flat donation right on that website. Um, so, you know, anyone looking to to support the coaches program in the American Cancer Society, urge them to go to uh, suitsandsneakers.org. Absolutely, and, and Suits and Sneakers Week is, is right around the corner, technically starting January 25th through the 31st, but I can tell you through uh, my own experience that the the dates don't matter as much, uh, but it's it's all about the effort. Coach, let, let me turn to you here. You you've coordinated this uh, with coaches on a, on a national level, and this year, of course, there's so many worthy causes. Um, mm -hmm. But I I think we've all been been affected by cancer. I know my my dad's a two time survivor of of lung cancer, and the list goes on and on. But what what motivated you to get involved to the level that you did? Well, some of what motivated me was uh, the pride that I have in Philadelphia basketball. The uh, uh, NCAA had put out a, a list of the top 100 programs raising funds for coaches versus cancer, and uh, not one Philadelphia school was on that list. And I knew that that had to change because coaching – it's a wonderful profession. It's a wonderful opportunity to really help young men change their lives, hopefully lift the spirits of your fans. Uh, and so I met with Fran Dunphy when he was coaching at the University of Pennsylvania. So let's change this. And that was the challenge. And then the involvement in coaches versus cancer, I've gotten a lot more than I could possibly give in meeting and, and taking your dad, for example, not a survivor. He, he's a warrior. He, he beat this thing. He looked at this thing and said, no, 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 can't happen. And the impact that it has, not just on the patient, but the patient's family, their yeah. business associates, the people that they go to church with. And that's what, that's what lifted me up. And I said, here we have all this adulation and, and all of this support. And really, we have a bully pulpit. And uh, yes, in the last year, the pulpit has to, has had to be shared. Mm -hmm. But coach, the cancer didn't recognize a pandemic. Right. Cancer kept going. Somebody watching this or someone, one of their loved ones, got a phone call in the last week that cancer had entered into their life. Yeah. And here's your decision. You now have to fight it and fight it and then eventually crush it. And if we can, and just to piggyback off of Brian, like uh, anything that, that anybody can come up with to be involved in this, that will raise a dollar. Adam, there's a dollar out there that that's going to push us further down the road to crushing cancer. Yeah. So what if these schools entered into, and I don't even know anything about it, but what if they entered into a, a video game uh, competition and made that their coaches versus cancer game. Right. You know? Think about the differences here. We're talking about suits and sneakers, and you guys watch as much college basketball as I'm involved in. Nobody's wearing wearing a suit this year. So right. you know, how do we kept capture, capture people's attention? And I know it's tough times. But, but, but when college – I'm sorry. Go ahead. But please, they're, they're – they're, your, your, your time, your talents, and your treasures can, even if it's in a thimble this year, can be utilized. And, and you know, the thing that college basketball has now, perhaps more than ever, is they still have their platform. And a lot of, and a lot of groups, organizations, leagues, uh, they don't. You know, college basketball is, is forged. And I know this season has been uh, unpredictable, to say the least. Um, and, and the other thing that I've seen that, that frustrates me is, you know, in my line of work, I have people who want to talk about rankings or offers or even basketball in general. And for me, it's like, Hey, let, let's get some perspective here about, about the world as a whole, not just, you know, about the things that, that really matter. And this is, this is one of those things. It doesn't get, it, it there's nothing that matters more than, than people's 
um, you know, health and wellness, whether it's whether it's from uh, COVID-19, from cancer or from any other issue. And so I think that the the avenue, the platform that college basketball still has uh, to be on TV and to have the resources to get their players tested so they're able to play safely. Um, it, it still offers a great opportunity to galvanize some support and have people recognize um, have people recognize the work that needs to be done and that we are behind on. And that doesn't mean you have to pick whether you're going to support, uh, you know, one cause over another. It just means that we have to uh, recognize that there's still a lot of things that need our attention and our help. Brian, what, what, questions because i don't want to pretend that that i know i don't even know the right questions to ask here so what information um is particularly timely this year that people really really need to know is it a matter of just donating or is it a matter of like coach said coming up with ideas to help uh creativity to to raise awareness and funds so i think coach said it perfectly where you know he to 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 use my own words to to really step outside the box this year. Um, we, we don't have, if you don't have a season, which is, you know, looking like a majority of high school and colleges are, are, are running into that, you know, don't, there's no set requirement to participate in Coaches Versus Cancer or to fundraise for the American Cancer Society. There's no, you don't have to follow a certain um, list of, of, of steps to do it. You know, you do whatever you feel comfortable with, whatever, whatever your school, your coach, your team feels comfortable with. Um, this is the first time in the history of the American Cancer Society that our mission uh, to save lives and reduce cancer mortality rates is actually at risk. So, you know, the... The answer is is to make donate as well as fundraise. Um, do whatever you can, um, but certainly step outside the box, look outside of the box, and uh, get creative. You know uh, the coach's example of the video games and um, holding turn video game tournaments or, or three on three basketball tournaments or free throw shooting contests yeah. that are outside of the. Um, the the normal coaches versus cancer platform or coaches versus cancer event uh, are fantastic ideas but really it's whatever you're comfortable with um we need all the support we can get coach the the effort of of uh college coaches around the country is is there still did the did the pandemic impact coaches ability not just to raise money but also to work on this issue has there and and this is a very sincere question i don't know the answer to this has there been have we seen the amount of college coaches galvanized on this issue like we would in past years, or are they just so preoccupied and, and rightfully so with their players' health, their their safety, their all the other issues, uh, social justice issues that that are at the forefront right now? I think Adam that that Lon Kruger and uh, Natalie Morrison from the American Cancer Society have kept coaches not on edge, but 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 this is part of the DNA coaches versus cancer has to be part of our DNA. The NABC knows that and they present it. And obviously suits and sneakers it can be celebratory. Uh, but what rolls through my head is as you watched Adam coaches all over this country at every level in all sports, we our student athletes. We took our lead from our student athletes and maybe their one vote made a difference to what's happening today in Washington, D.C. Maybe that one vote. So this is the same kind of idea. Yes, players' well-being, mental health well-being is paramount. Their, their, their safety is paramount. But we still have this opportunity to help others. And if we can just paint this picture for all coaches, when you stretch out your hand, you're touching hearts. And that's what we're challenged to do. Yes, we have to take care of our own. But at this moment in time, count our blessings that the majority of us are playing. But even those that aren't, like the many high school coaches that reach out and they'll say to me, how do I stay in touch with my, my players? How do I stay in touch with my student body? Well, reach outside of yourself. Yeah, Ryan has a great description there, outside the box, not just in planning what you're doing, but empowering what they're doing. Right. I always I always have this in my head, Adam. The the there was a little girl 
She sold lemonade by the cup at five years old. And now there's nobody in the country that doesn't know about Alex's lemonade stand. That little girl, she fought cancer. She did all she could to crush it, and it got her. But I was there the first day that she poured her first glass of lemonade. That's the same thing in Coaches versus Cancer. There's a fifth grade coach out there who, who's going to make a difference. Not can make a difference, is going to make a difference. And it goes all the way up to the biggest names in the in the college game. Crush cancer. That's what this has to be about. And I think you make a terrific point to the coaches and programs that that are playing um, great. Now you you have a, a platform and you have the the organic organization to be able to to uh, work towards this goal. If you're not playing, this gives you something to connect with your team about. It gives you something to to work with your kids on. Um, it gives you something to engage your community on. Um, and it gives you an opportunity to still teach your kids about issues that, as I said, are, are so much greater than basketball. And I don't want to minimize, you know, all the other stuff that that's, you know, like I, I just on Twitter, someone hit me now, like join our March to get us to play sports. And OK, great. Like, yeah, I hope you can play. And I hope if, if you can play safely. But m more importantly, I, I, I hope that we recognize and have some perspective about about what's really important. Brian, can you give us a historical context of what the uh, coaches versus cancer um, subset, if that's the right word, of the American Cancer Society has been able to achieve over the years? Yeah, the program was founded uh, by Coach Norm Stewart uh, in 1993. Uh, I think it was University of Missouri. And uh, since 1993, so it's in its 28th year right now, the program, um, it's it's really grown. It started off with a um, something called the three point attack, where I, I believe that uh, coach Norm Stewart's mother was diagnosed with cancer. And he, uh, he asked his players to um, seek pledges for, uh, for every three point shot that they hit during the season. Um, and then he reached out to other teams in his conference and got the entire conference on board. Um, and that was essentially what founded the coaches versus cancer program. Um, and since 1993, uh, it's raised $125 million for um, cancer research and um, the, the life saving programs and services. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Um, Gentlemen, as I said, I, I, I want to be uh, humble enough to, to recognize that I don't know all the right questions to ask here. I know that I know that we're behind. I know that there's more uh, things than ever to be aware of and, and to fight against this year. Um, but we, we can't forget the battle against cancer. Coach, is there anything you'd like to add um, before we we uh, we let you go here? Uh, I just. I want. When people say it impacts everybody, I, I get that. I, 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 I appreciate that. But I think that we then have to impact everyone. Yeah. And we have this opportunity. And, and there is nothing. There is nothing that is too small. There's nothing too small because it could be a seed that's going to grow and grow and grow. Um, there's a lot of celebration. There's a lot of celebration and, you know, in our world, there, there's going to be a champion crowned in April, all things God willing that that's going to happen. But any celebration of being able to play basketball or be a champion in basketball pales in comparison to the day that whether it's on the on your podcast, whether it's on the national news, when there's an announcement that cancer has been crushed, that will be true celebration. And why not join it? Join it as a soldier today. Crush cancer. Or even just the news, and this I can speak to myself, when you hear someone's cancer-free, that's Great. that's better than any game you can win, any Great championship point. you can win. Great point. Um, and uh, Brian, any anything that, that you would like to add, any whether it's historical context, important, uh, the, the, the floor is yours, my friend, whatever, whatever people need to know here. Uh, I would just add that, uh, you know, th this program is open to, to coaches and, and youth and teams of all levels. Uh, and there is absolutely no minimum requirement to participate. Uh, and there's no set requirement to participate. Uh, so if there's anything that you can do, 
you know, that is inside of your comfort level uh, that you're interested in doing. That is uh, supporting the Coaches versus Cancer program. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Coaches versus Cancer game that you're hosting. Um, any support, any participation um, will benefit the program, and it can be it can be part of the Coaches versus Cancer brand. And, and, hey, Adam, could I yeah. have one thing? Next, yep. when you're watching college games and you see your favorite coaches in this, there you go. Hopefully, that will stir you. Just pick up the call. Just yeah. pick up. Or gather somebody else. Let one other person know that we're at that cancer didn't quit, cancer didn't stop, and that together, you know, it could be a two on two. Could, but just make a call. Is it a dollar? That's a wonderful dollar. Thank you. Is it an idea? It's a wonderful idea. Use this next week during those games. The biggest difference is all these stylish guys. You know, Adam, like Jay Wright, instead of like a $5,000 suit, is going to be wearing sneakers <laughs> and a, a, a sweat top. But the mask will be the one. Use yeah. this mask to make a call. Brian, do we know where we can get those masks? Are those for sale anywhere? So there is a link. Uh, I wish I had sent it to you. If you want to I can put it, it, we'll put it in the show notes. We'll take, yeah, we can put it in the in the show notes. I'll dig it up. But yes, there's a link to that that uh, folks can, click, can go to to purchase those masks. Okay, so if you're watching this, you just look in the. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, you can look in the bottom. If you're listening to this on iTunes or, or SoundCloud, I will make sure I link to that on my social media, which is just at Adam Finkelstein. Brian, the last point as Coach was talking, this this occurred to me here. I, I think the other thing it's 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 not necessarily a fundraising uh, factor, but just in terms of cancer awareness, I have read that. Um, early detection it has declined this year as well because people are apprehensive to to seek uh you know to go to hospitals or to visit their doctor because of the the pandemic and i i wondered if you and i know that's not your area of expertise but i wondered if that would be something that you would be uh comfortable just discussing because i think fundraising is an important part but so I, I can, I can, I, I'll, I'll share this. One of the reasons why my dad is a survivor is because uh, uh, we were by luck, sheer chance, we were able to catch it early. He went to the hospital for another issue. They found the cancer when we were there, totally accidentally, we never would have found it. And as a result, um, the early detection was a big part of, of, of why he was, he was able to to recover and, and beat it. So I think that in these times too, that is another really important point that if people have, you know, if you feel a lump or you feel you, something doesn't feel quite right. You, you, you've, you got to trust your medical provider and, and, and seek a professional. Uh, you said it perfectly. The, you know, the pandemic has, has dominated the, the news and, you know, for rightfully so for, for good reason. Um, but, yeah, early detection is the one of the most important uh, parts of, of of cancer prevention, uh, of cancer su surviving the uh, the disease, and uh, you know that goes along with education and awareness, which is a huge part of what the American Cancer Society does. So you know your dollar is is super important. Uh, awareness is is uh, you know equally important because uh you know it leads to education and education leads to early detection and that saves lives um, and there's a, a direct line uh, that connects early detection to um cancer the, the, the cancer survival rates that we're seeing this year so um perfectly said um adam is uh early detection is key well gentlemen thank you again for your time uh for your hard work i know you know it's it's rare that you get to spend your your life really impacting others and if you're in this in this fight that is exactly what you were doing so uh coach i know this is in the middle of the season 12 and 1 season i should mention so thank you for uh for making the time brian thank you as always and, and if i could just uh kind of wrap this interview up by restating some of what we learned uh we're down 70 percent from last year in terms of the coaches versus cancer initiatives and cancer is not slowing down. Early detection has slowed down. Fundraising and early detection are down. Cancer itself is not. So please, with all that's going on this year, uh, I know it's a lot. I know there's, there's more adversity than ever, but uh, whatever you can do would be much appreciated. I know for me, you will find links to this on my social media handles at Adam Finkelstein on Twitter and Instagram. We will also make sure we post information on the New England Recruiting Report 
and on your view. So to both of you, thank you for joining us. To everybody out there, continue to stay healthy, and we will be back with you again next week.